you know, you can't get away from the SEC network. And one of the guys on there is an ex-Vanderbilt quarterback. And he said, he didn't get to play for you, but he wished he could have played on the defense, just all the, the emotion you bring. Do you tone that down during the game, or do you just keep that ramped up? Well, I, I promise the defensive guys, I told them in a meeting the other day, I said, I know y'all not going to believe this, but during the game, I'm not going to yell and scream at you, but I'm going to have a lot of fun. So I don't know if I can tone it down, but one of the things I do going into every game, I remind myself, you know, let the players play. You know, they're going to make mistakes, uh, encourage them. Uh, you know, I, I try my best not to tear them down during the game and just let them have fun. And uh, we'll correct the mistakes and let, let them problem solve on game day. And, uh, you know, we'll get the issues fixed, but let's go have some fun. And let's not beat them up, let's coach them up on game day. Going into this first game, which areas kind of do you feel best about and which areas uh, maybe keep you up at night a little bit? Well, a lot of things keep up at night. Where you want me to start at? No, I'm just kidding. But I uh, really, really feel uh, really good about the defensive line. Uh, I think we have some quality depth at the defensive line position. And uh, Coach Roach has done a tremendous job of uh, bringing those guys along, fundamental and technique sound, and developing uh, some most trustworthy depth at that position. Uh, so that would be, if you would ask me, that would probably be uh, my most comfort zone on defense right now. Um, the one that we got to pay attention to is the uh, is the linebacker position and the safety position. Uh, we got to make sure that we pay attention to those during the game and make sure we got the right guys in the right seat. And uh, the unfortunate thing about it being the first game uh, for all of us, and uh, so we got to really, you know, have a good set of eyes on those two positions and make sure that the guys are in there uh, that are performing and being productive and if not, get the right guys in there until we can just get that chemistry exactly right. How do you feel going into Saturday without uh, Ken Webster and Detrick Bing Dukes? Well, you know, uh, I haven't played a game with them. You know, they, I haven't had them on the field doing the, doing the game. So uh, I don't know how I feel. I got to have them first so I know how I feel without them. You know, but uh, so I certainly wish I had them, had both of them. But, uh, you know, we'll go out and play this game and, and uh, you know, and look forward to getting those guys back, you know, the following week and, uh, and pick up from there. Give us a little insight on South Alabama. Well, I'll tell you what, you know, when, once you study them on film, Chuck, and you look at their personnel, um, you know, you, you look at the quarterback position, I always like to start that first because he's your decision maker. And uh, I think you have to, you know, uh, game plan around him and, and disrupt him. But... You know, I think uh, uh, Garvin, Cole Garvin's guy is going to be up on the center for him first. Uh, I think he, he's a guy that can extend the play with his feet. Uh, he's a good pinpoint passer. Uh, you know, he's got a nice arm. Uh, he does, does a good job. Uh, you watched him in the Arkansas State game uh, last year. He spreads the football around. And uh, they do a tremendous job of giving him packages. Um, he can use his skill set and his ability to excel. So we got to make sure we account for him. And uh, I'm pretty sure he's going to throw some quick game because he's pretty accurate in the, qu in the quick game. And therefore, Ted's as an offense, they like the vertical game. So we, got, we have to do a tremendous job of keeping the top on the coverage because they're going to throw it deep. They're going to challenge us early and often in the vertical game. Uh, so that's their forte. That's their DNA. I think their best play on offense uh, will be the running back, Xavier Johnson. It, that, he has a really good skill set. The thing that you really admire about him on take the most is he's a one-decision guy. Uh, he's been coached well. He's going to make that one decision, get his toe on the ground. He's going to go north and south. And uh, he has the ability to get second level and close the door to finish the play. He's got good short area quickness, good long speed, and, and he's a tough runner. You know, so we have to account for him uh, on every play because uh, I'm quite sure they'll hand the ball out to him, get him in the, in the screen game. They'll find some crafty ways to get him to football because by far he's their, he's their best player. And uh, we have to find out who this Jamarius Way is in terms of the type of football player. They've been ranting and raving about this junior college receiver uh, coming in to give him a shot in the arm. So we have to figure out early in the game, you know, what's their game plan for him? Is he a vertical stretch guy? They want to try to get him across the middle. They're going to try to get him the ball quick. You know, he's a longer guy. I think he's listed at 6'4". Uh, so those are the guys on the offense, on their offense, that we got to really pay attention to. And uh, to have some success, we have to stop those guys. Coach, uh, Coach Luke, you know, touched on it a little bit, but 
your decision to have the whole staff on the field during the game. Uh, just can you, you know, shed some light on why you made that decision? Well, you know, you go you go around and around, you know, about how you want to set it up on game day. And unless you can never be exactly right. So don't go tell them that crime dog say he right by doing this. But I think it's the I think it's the best fit for us right now. Uh, and and we came to the decision as a staff uh, because this is our first time together. And uh, I think uh, the position coach has been doing a tremendous job with their guys. And I think going into battle, you know, going into a game, I think those guys need to be able to look at their position coach in their eyes. And the position coach need to coach them, you know, uh, doing competition. And uh, I think that's the best way we can get that adjustment done. And uh, we got Zach Brown upstairs in the press box, very smart. We've gone through a couple of dry runs, game situations, uh, just to see if it's feasible. And he's done a tremendous job. He's real poised. He's very smart. He gives us all the information that we need from up top. And uh, I think it's just great when you look over there and you see Coach Roach with the D lineman. You see Coach Pivot with the linebacker. And Jason, who's done a phenomenal job with the secondary, you know, with the secondary. And I think it's just too important on game day uh, not to have those guys with their position coach if you can still get the information from up top. And I think right now we're structured to do that. Uh, so we're going to go in the game with all the full-time guys, you know, on the ground, uh, including myself. And, and uh, that's the way we're going to fight this game. What's, uh, what do you like about Jalen Jones, and what's allowed him to make a push at safety? I tell you, you know, you know we, 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 I think the last time we had a chance to visit with each other, uh, we, we talked about we've been, us being deficient at that position. And, uh, and so we went around as a staff and said, okay, who's the next best guy to go inside? And, uh, and Coach Jones uh, decided, hey, let's look at 31 inside. And uh, Jalen looks so natural. I mean, he looks so natural. His movement skills, uh, his awareness, uh, I mean, I wish we'd move in there early on so he had more time on task. Uh, but I like his athleticism. I like his ball skills. I really like his attention to detail. Uh, you know, you wish he was maybe about 10 pounds heavier. You know, but uh, other than that, I think we've got him in the right seat, uh, not only for the football team but for himself. And uh, he's been very productive there in, in fall training camp. So I'm looking forward to watching him get out there and play safety with the live bullets coming at him. At the end of spring, you left open the possibility of Miles moving back to safety. Was was that part of the discussion in camp? Oh, certainly. And that, that possibility is going to be open until the end of the season because, <laughs> you know, we play a violent game and, you know, guys are going to move around. And we went our meetings. We, we trained all of them for different spots. You know, we asked the question, hey, what's the star supposed to do on this play? We better have every DB raise their hand because we have to coach for depth. So, you know, and it's a blessing to have those guys on the roster that offer you some flexibility. So now you can continue to play at a high level if you move a guy around on, on the roster. But we, we're certainly not going to wait until we're upon that moment. Uh, we'll train those guys for depth. So if we get to that situation, then those guys can move around and we don't miss a beat, so to speak. Coach, you got to watch a little film on South Alabama. They ran a lot of junk plays, throwbacks to tight ends, <clears throat> weird looking screens and just anything they could pull out of the hat. And that was against Mississippi State, first game. Obviously, a lot of it worked. I know you guys were prepared for that. How do you prepare for all the various junk plays? And my second question is, you moved Ken Webster to free safety, but you've moved him back. Is he out of that discussion? Well, I, I, go, to the, uh, I go to the junk play first. And you know, I'm getting old, so you might have to remind me what your second question was. <laughs> but uh, you, you really, the, the way you prepare a defense, in my opinion, for trick plays is discipline. Because you, you don't get a different form of trick play. You're not going to get the same one you saw on tape. You, you Maybe you will, but probably you will not. So you, they have to be really disciplined and lay their eyes on their keys. And read their keys and allow them, their keys to take them to the ball. We looked at a couple last night. And uh, you can clearly see now where the tight end is going vertical, but the lineman show a high hat. So you have to say, what is that? It's a pass. But then you see the backfield set showing run action. So the biggest thing is just to show it to them as much as you can. You know, get them on the grass and show it to them. But the next biggest thing, just make sure they're disciplined and get your eyes on your keys. Uh, because if not, you take an offense, uh, offense like South Alabama, they're going to come with those trick plays. If you're out of, out of place, you're not disciplined, they're going to hit you with an explosive play. So I think the biggest thing is discipline and showing them to them on tape and also giving it to them in that situation. We decided as a defense staff, we won't go out and have not one period where we're not throwing the ball vertical or we're doing the trick play. So you spot on. I like your sky report. You spot on. Uh, regarding Ken Webster, uh, we, we had him in at safety. And sometimes, you know, coaches, we, we feel like we got a good pulse on things. And, and so uh, somebody went down at corner. I, I want to say it was Hamilton went out for a play or two. And, 
And so Webster jumped in that corner. And so we get in and we're looking at the tape. And I go, wait a minute, this guy looks so natural in that corner. What are we doing? And so <laughs> we said, well, you know, who, who else can we move inside? And that's when the discussion started. Uh, let's get Webster back in the, in the right seat. And uh, he, we still rep him some at safety for emergency. But he's so natural at corner and looked natural on corner. And we just couldn't ignore it when we saw it on tape. And uh, I think he's in, he's in the right seat. So um, we're looking forward to his return. And he'll give us a good shot in the arm at corner. Coach, I know you and uh, Tyler Siski worked together here at Ole Miss at the beginning. Have y'all had a few conversations over the summer? No, I kind of stayed away from Cisco. You know, I like Cisco, but you know, uh, uh, you know, the one reason I stayed away from him because he probably wanted to play me in golf, and he probably can beat me in golf. So I, I wanted to hold on to that victory. I think I beat him the last time, so I stayed away from. him. But now we, we talk occasionally, uh, but believe it or not, we didn't we didn't talk about the game. He just called us how each other was doing, and he called and congratulated me on the move and all. But uh, we'll get buddies, and we'll get a chance to talk after the game. But no, we didn't have much much conversation about the game. You guys have talked a lot about defensive line depth. On the interior, we, we've seen Benito and Josiah and, and Breland. Who, who are some other guys on the interior that uh, jumped out for you? Well, I'll tell you, the one guy, Ross Donnelly. I mean, you know, uh, don't be surprised. you see him in the mix in the game. Uh, he, he's had a really good camp. And uh, it just speaks to, you know, his commitment and, and his effort and attitude and the way Coach Roach is coaching those guys up front. And, and Ross has made some tremendous strides. And uh, he's also taking uh, Charles Wiley, moved him inside at a three technique. So those guys are coming along and doing, doing a great job. And uh, they're at the point now we trust them to put them in a ball game. Uh, so those guys are giving us some great quality depth uh, on the interior line. And one thing we talked to the defense unit about, and maybe 11 guys try to start the game, but we need at least 22, 23 starters to win in this league. You know, so there's no such thing as, you know, this guy's the sole starter. We got to make sure we coach for depth because, you know, you get in those games, you're playing 80 snaps. That, that young man will tell you, oh, coach, I can play 80 snaps. But you get to about 50, you look at him, and he's not the same guy. So we got to make sure we roll, roll those guys in the game, you know, and uh, because at the key points in the game, red zone, third down, in the game, we want to make sure we got the best guys in the game and they're fresh. What's the learning process been like for the true freshmen, you know, with this defense? Well, the one thing that, that, that is going to be a cornerstone of our defense is we want to err on the side of simplicity. We're very simple. And uh, certainly, uh, you know, it's been a, been a learning curve for guys, you know, like C.J. Miller, you know, D.D. Bowie. You know, and the one thing you have to realize and, is that, you know, when you ask this freshman to come in to the collegiate environment, his whole life is turned upside down, sleeping in a different bed. And no longer is he mom's cookie. You know, you know, he, he, most of the time he's here, you know, he's got a, a coach that's on him with a heavy voice. Probably didn't get that a ton in high school, not as much. And, and uh, their whole environment has changed. They're away from the community. And uh, so it's a challenge for them. Uh, but I think they've done a tremendous job of uh, coming in and studying, and uh, particular guys on the back end. Uh, coach Jones has done a tremendous job in training camp, you know, spending extra time, you know, with the younger guys. And uh, Coach Roach has done a good job with Ryder Anderson up front. So, uh, you know, we're looking to play some young guys. Uh, we're not going to look at that classification. I told several of them, if you're interested in the red shirt, go buy you one, put it in your closet. Because we're not, we're not, cause, cause you're going to have to play. You know, and, and the one thing I remind the coaching staff of, listen, you know, don't look at them and think they're freshmen and don't put them in the game. You know, if they prove in practice that they're ready to go in the game, you know, don't be afraid. Let's put them in the game and let's go. But now let's be smart when we put them in the game. You know, so you'll see some freshmen play and, and uh, they may make some freshman mistakes, but hopefully our effort and our attitude will make up for it. 